Today's project is this Ford F700 flatbed truck. He says that it has a pretty significant exhaust leak, possibly from the exhaust manifolds. It has a bit of a misfire, kind of runs rough, and there's some electrical problems. The fuel gauge doesn't work, and some of the various lights don't work. The last diagnostic hurdle on this truck is the lights. Some of the lights don't work. Actually, very few of the lights do work. Let's put it that way. When I first started working on the truck, basically nothing worked. The tail lights worked, and the right turn signal worked, and that was it. And most of the problems I've found so far have just been related to, you know, connector issues with these old flat blade style connectors. So I unplugged and replugged in the headlight switch, which is hanging down right here. Now I have gauge lights. The back lights on the gauge work. Gauges work, which they did not work before. And the headlights weren't working. I just unplugged and replugged in this little dimmer switch on the floor here. And now the headlights work. So that's annoying. Anyway, we'll go through and tweak all those connectors, put some dielectric grease on them you know, the usual stuff. So what's left is the left side turn signals and the marker lights. I think all the marker lights don't work. Well, the cab lights work and the, the rear tail lights work, but none of the other lights on the box work and the front marker lights don't work. So that's where we're headed. I don't think it's in here. I think those are going to be wiring issues outside. These floor-mounted dimmer switches, they have a lot of problems in our, in our climate because of the salt and corrosion that comes in on your boots. So we're going to use these little terminal cleaning pry... <coughs> Try that again, Wes. Terminal cleaning tweezers. So they're just kind of tweezers that have a little diamond coating on them. You can reach in here and just scrape all the crustiness out. Lots of fun working on these old trucks. And we'll click that. I bent the little spring back up already that holds it in the terminal or holds it in the connector. Yeah, connector. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, wrong way, guy. Here we go. Yeah, we'll give that a generous hosing of dielectric grease. Which, of course, prevents the flow of electricity and should never be used on electrical connectors. Ah, this stupid PTO thing. There we go, that feels much better. Much better. Well the turn signal problem I think is just in the switch. Well the right side works except for the indicator in the instrument panel doesn't come on. I just gotta buy a bulb. And then the left side, it kinda works, but if you click it all the way into the detent, Well, I don't know. 
maybe something to do with the turn signal cancel cam because I turned the steering wheel a little bit. Now it seems to. Oh, oh, I broke it again. And back here. Yeah, depending on where you had the steering wheel, it seems to work fine. So I don't think we're going to worry too much about it. Also, did the old wiggle test on the right side indicator. And uh, now that works magically. I wonder if this thing was sitting for a long time. I don't know that much of the history of it. Typical old truck stuff, I guess. You know, who really needs to turn left anyway? Front marker lights. Starting on the left hand side, we have no power here. And this harness is looking pretty rough. We're going to have to fix that. Those wires are all bare. But the bigger problem is right here by the hood hinge. Uh, this is not supposed to go through this hole. It's actually supposed to go out here. It's got a clamp even for it, a loom clamp. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but hang on. So that harness has been shut in the hood hinge several times. All the wires are damaged. And then there's one right there. It's totally gone from the connector. So yeah, we'll have to figure out how to fix that. Well, I managed to de-pin the connector and then kind of scrape the old wire out of the crimp, strip it back, and re-crimp it onto the same wire. I think it's going to work. At least I don't see why it wouldn't. Probably won't get away with it a second time. There it is. Clicked back in. Cool. Put the little keeper back in here. I know you guys can't see. I did finally, finally order new lights for the shop. So hopefully, between now and the first of the year, I'll have a chance to put those up. So technically, that should work now. I've got the thing that tells me right here. So I'm pretty sure I turned the switch off. Hang on. Boom. Okay, that's this side. Now the rest of this stuff, I'll probably just have to kind of go through here and unmangle this. Maybe use some liquid electrical tape and then I'll tape that up real good and we'll reattach it outside of the core support here so we don't get don't get it pinched in the hood hinge anymore. Well, I'm reasonably happy with this. Got those three scary looking wires repaired up there by the light. Retaped the harness. Reattached the loom. And then I've fixed, well kind of fixed all the wires that got pinched in the hood hinge and retaped that loom. Installed a new bolt in the loom clamp and I even installed a bolt in this other loom clamp that was just hanging there. So she's all tied up and it works. Yeah buddy. Well here's a head scratcher for you. Underneath the lens of this light is a wire that is cut in two. No idea how that happened, why it would be that way, but feel pretty confident if we just uh, splice those back together, we're gonna have our marker light back. There is power on this side of the wire. Well, every time I don't show how I do this, somebody asks me why I didn't show how I do this, so. Here we go. Strip that wire. Strip that wire. These are 18 gauge, these are little 18 gauge wires. So this is adhesive lined shrink tubing. And we're gonna use an uninsulated butt connector. So you want the seam side 
to go in kind of in the saddle of the crimper and the dimple's gonna be opposite of the seam. Mm, maybe we better go to this one first. Oh. There's no such thing as crimping it too tight. See, I didn't crimp that one tight enough. Yeah, let's go ahead and try that again. Maybe, uh, maybe do it right this time. There's an idea. Did we get it? Hallelujah. Now we just jam that thing over top of there. What in the heck is going on here? Huh? All right. that is that must be the factory crimp yeah okay so we can fix that too we'll just have to have uh, another splice all right so same thing this poor wire I think there's three butt splices in the in about this much length of wire the whole light must have been replaced at one time so it's got a splice where it goes into the old connector and then, I guess this was a factory splice. And then the one we added. Who knows? 26 year old truck, there's been, there's been many hands on it. There. This is a Weller 6966C. It's a mini heat gun made specifically for electronics. This thing is fantastic. And it even works. Good deal. Well, I guess the box is gonna be next. And I don't think it's gonna be too hard to figure out the problem. We got lots of wires hanging here. Like that. And then, you know, typical of a dump truck, any kind of a dump truck, this this section back here at the back just gets hammered. You know, they dump things out and then they fall back into the into the rear of the truck and yeah, everything's bent. So maybe the first step would be just to bend those brackets back out and then we're gonna have to do a, a major overhaul on the wiring. We'll try it. This steel's pretty thick. We might have to use the frame rack, AKA the forklift. This wouldn't be a proper wiring repair without the welder. Uh, these aren't pretty or perfect, but they're a lot better than they were. I think it's going to work just fine. This thing here, let's see if I can get it from the side. She's got a swale, and that's not coming out without heat, I don't think. So we'll leave that. Won't make a difference. And this one's 
probably the best one. Well, there's no sense spending a lot of time on it. It's just going to get destroyed again. You know, the back side of a dump truck takes a real beating. There's a lot of good ways to splice wires together. Everybody has their own preferred method. Solder, heat shrink connectors, butt connectors, scotch locks. But I'd have to say the least successful is probably this twist it together, cover it with tape, and cross your fingers method. I've certainly seen some hacked together wiring in my time, but I think this truck takes the cake. Every single wire splice is just twisted and taped. It's actually worse underneath. There's probably a dozen places where they spliced the wires by, I don't know what they did. I think they soldered them together and then covered them with RTV silicone and then wrapped them with a single layer of tape. Which, I mean, it actually didn't work too badly. But I don't want to leave it like that. That's not, that's not the right way to do it. I don't know. I mean, this is a disaster. We got a butt connector here that's all crusty and green. Those two look okay. But I mean, look at this. You got butt connector. And then there was one that was twisted together not an inch away. Twisted together. That wire's broken off, whatever it goes to. Got shrink fit butt connectors up there. I think there's one there. Then there's more of those RTV silicone splices, then butt connectors, then that one's... Whatever that was is gone. Yeah, I don't know. There's a spot in the wiring harness for the trailer that's rubbed through. I mean, it needs to be gutted and start over but it's so costly to do that it takes forever to wire stuff like this that's why everybody hacks it together I don't know I guess I'm gonna cut this all apart and we're gonna start splicing you know the right way and see where we end up yeah what a mess here's the plan so it's got these really short pigtails for the lights. So we're going to replace all of those with new ones that are you know, significantly longer. And I'll show you guys how I do this two into one crimp. Because that's a real common problem that you run into. So what I've got here is uninsulated butt connectors. And they're a special style that have one end larger than the other so it's yellow on one end blue on the other end so you can do a single 16 gauge wire into one end and a double into the other end and they work fantastically for situations like this where you need to splice three wires together and we will crimp that now these connectors take a a lot of force to crimp so I'm using the ratcheting crimping tool this one's made by well it's sold by Thomas and Betts I don't know who actually made it, it says made in Sweden they use this jacketed duplex wire which is a good choice for this application that's what I would use so it's just two wires but then it has this thick plastic jacket around the outside so it saves you having to use loom wrap everywhere I may have to cut that back a little bit. We we'll use some more of the adhesive lined shrink tube. Hopefully this is the big enough size to fit over that. Err, gotta use the wrong size. That's it. So the adhesive should keep that nice and dry. Hopefully it lasts a long time. All right, guys. I've been toiling away underneath the truck, and we're looking a lot better. So I got rid of all of the old solder RTV tape splices, and I consolidated a few things. I got rid of a ground. I just c consolidated everything into one ground. And, well, there's one I forgot to shrink. 
So I got to fix that. Always check your work. Uh, let's see. Some of the stuff I was able to reuse. Most of it I had to redo. And then this wire here for the license plate light. Got that one tuned up. And there's a couple spots in this trailer wiring harness that were rubbed through. So I just used some liquid electrical tape. We'll let that all set up. And then we've got to go top side and plug in all the lights and make sure all this stuff works before we loom it all up. I also reworked the harness for the three marker lights in the middle of the box and eliminated one splice there so it's much better. Yeah buddy they all work. Did have two bad bulbs this one and that one but otherwise good to go. Hi right, guys, got everything loomed up, tied up, taped up. I think it looks pretty good, or it looks better than what it was before. And up on the three marker lights, I added some loom clamps there to hold that harness. Should be good to go. Do you want to tell people what happened to that cute bunny that we saw in the last video? Oh. I'm supposed to keep that a secret. <laughs> Wasn't very nice, pup. I don't think he did anything to you. Alright, pup. Can you catch? Good boy. <laughs> that was a good catch.